What is going on guys? Double R here back again today with another video. You guys see we have the beautifully mint red 350Z. This is our brand new student drifter car and with unfortunate events with what happened with the 240. We ended up crashing the 240SX. We actually ran the passenger side straight into the wall. And with that came a few things. One, a really fucked up 240. Two, probably one of the worst things that I can imagine happening to these wheels before a crack, a bend. If we inspect the wheel all the way around, we'll see that right here, we actually ended up chipping the wheel on the wall from about here to here is where we've kind of flattened out and lost that circular angle. It's taking about three days for the tire on this to be flattened out with the weight of the car on there. So in today's video, we're gonna be dropping this wheel off arguably at one of the most famous wheel repair shops in this county. It's gonna be Glenn's Wheel Repair in Tampa. We're gonna be going all the way 45 minutes out there to be able to drop this wheel off. Honestly, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Thank God the wheel's not cracked, but we gotta check out the barrel on the inside because you gotta remember this is a three-piece wheel they're really sensitive there's a lot of hardware involved and we just don't want to we don't want to mess these up man because these are really hard to get oh my god please don't just be easy on me in the comment section please i know i know it's it's white it's cream it's oh my god oh my god what is he doing I'm so sorry. I'm so. Oh my god. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so. Uh, you can't be an official YouTuber without a cold start, right? Something like that. So something I have to definitely point out, if you guys don't know, I do have Toyo R888Rs, which are like the fancy ones. They're the expensive Toyos that you see with the crazy ridiculous slits in them. Now, this is not a complaint, but it's more of an observation. These tires are really expensive and they work. They're really, really, really grippy, man. And they last a decent amount of time. Uh, I know there's other tires out there, but one thing I have to point out, and if any of you ever had r triple I want you guys to put in the comment section below if you guys have noticed the same thing because this is kind of a reoccurrence with every single tire I get no matter which size it is it's always with the r triple R's is the noise they're ridiculously loud I mean it sounds like something is rubbing or humming but it's not the most annoying thing in the world especially if you have music on or a decent exhaust note it kind of overplays the tires but I know you guys hear that. That's like, that's ridiculous. Now, they work. I'm not complaining about them. And honestly, I've only had one other tire on here and it was the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's and they worked beautifully, but these are a little more aggressive. Now the Michelin Pilot Sports did work better in the rain. I did notice that, but they were a lot more expensive for something that didn't grip the road as well as these Toyos do, especially from a dig. These from a dig, if you get the PSI just right, they're perfect. All right, cool. Thank you, Glenn, very much. It's uh, it's actually a lot cheaper than I expected. It's only gonna be something like 120 bucks just to be able to fix the bent wheel, which. Which honestly, some of you might think that's really expensive, but to save a whole wheel compared to buying another one, it's really not comparable at all. They said that they'll be able to take care of the chrome for me, they'll make sure it doesn't crack, and uh, they'll go ahead and polish the lip of the wheel as well after they're done. So, that's really cool. I appreciate you guys at Glenn's uh, Wheel Repair for hooking me up. Go ahead, I'm, I'm feeling nice today. Go ahead, you can go. Thank you to Glenn's Wheel Repair for making my drift dreams come true. It's a fancy meeting you here. Man, I just, I literally went to go drop off my wheel and I'm like, oh, I'm close to Z Fever. Maybe I should come. And I came and I saw you. Sean gave me a, a upper O2, which should be good. And uh, I just got the, the Q test pipes. I got the headers at home, so now I got the test pipes. The VHR test and pipes. And my pulley came in. Wait, what are you doing with the test pipes you have right now? I have to give them back to them for uh, the cube test bike. I was gonna buy them. Okay, damn. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I. That's all good. Talk to Doug, but uh, I got. I got. I have to move. But yeah, my pulley came in too. Yes. <laughs> 
Hola, como esta? How you doing, bro? Pretty good, chilling. Chilling. Any other shops? Yup. I just wanted to come see your pretty face, homie. How you doing, bro? Small baby. What do you want me to? Oh, the j four doors. Oh my god. It's not running yet. A little bit more left, but uh, should make about 800 to the wheel when it's done. Okay, now. this motor made uh, 700 previously. The last car it was in, and then I changed a few things. Oh wow, but she's it's, um, beautiful. It's a custom APS twin kit that has uh, actual tubular manifolds now. Turbos are fresh. Prototype cams, I won't put the specs out on, but it's a full CSS block. It's got CP pistons, Carrillo rods, billet girdle. Um, it's got a lot of finishing up right now, it's still. Is that polished or chrome? Polished. It looks like It's polished. a headache. Really? Yeah, I, get, I did it. Dude, this is? This is 100% in-house, done by me, Martin built the motor. These are Bradley. beautiful. Every single stud you got as an Allen key. I gotta finish the rest of the kit. Dude, they're beautiful. Most of it's out, but I'm still in the work process, which is why nothing's actually tight. So, fuel system has to get done. What the hell? It's on 1300cc injectors right now. It's got a dual 450 fuel pump, but this is the actual fuel where I'm using an old school setup. It's a full AAM. And then I'm still in the process of porting oh, my that's lower. Beautiful. Right now, I'm just Where'd routing my lines. Where'd you get that lines. crossover line from? I made it. Really? Yeah, I make all this stuff. It's Dude, I tried so hard. I was doing it for my supercharged setup because I got the CJM fuel rails. And I couldn't find anywhere to be able to make this kind of line. Oh, I make them in house. I do it all here. So when you need them, just let me know. All right, I'm gonna go home and eat and then I'm gonna start jacking the car and start taking it apart. What are you taking apart? Oh, yeah. Take the the motor mounts, the headers, the downpipes, and the, the pulleys. That's gonna fuck. <laughs> Alright bro, All right, catch you around. I appreciate you for letting me come through. The road one day. I will, I will. Oh, hold up! Light it up! Light it up! Yeah. Wait, what? Wait, I don't Which wheel? wheel? Which wheel? It's gonna be that wheel. Oh, it's the open. Come on! Come on! You can do it! <laughs> Is that the shop truck? That's his personal shop truck. <laughs> <laughs> right, That's his mobile home. That's his mobile home. <laughs> I gotta go home and start working. Alright, let me know if you need any help. Well, I mean, you're gonna be working on your car. Yeah, but it's it's a thermostat gasket and test bikes, so it's not done crazy. Alright, I'll see you later. Let me know if you need help. Just come by the shop. Alright. Do it for the video! <laughs> nah, it fucking run like shit! Oh. I'm trying to make it one piece so I can afterwards okay <laughs> well you know they're gonna want to see something obviously I can't let them go empty-handed one hour later Sir, can you step out of the car, please? Step out of the vehicle? I'm sorry? What did I do wrong? You're speeding and driving aggressively. Can, I, can you step out of the car, please? What speed was I talking? Can you step at? out of the car, please? Yeah, sure. Thank you.
charger. tomorrow what the hell man i just want to give the biggest shout out in the world to yoho for hooking me up i don't know what the cop did he straight up took my license and he took my registration and took it with him because i could barely even get this car out of impound but yeah i got arrested i went to go drop off the wed's wheels yesterday i was going 86 miles an hour on the highway and then within seconds I just get pulled over, asked to be taken out the car. I got it all on Instagram Live if I can pull it up somehow. I spent nine hours in jail. <sighs> totally unnecessary, man. I was literally just trying to get to fixing this Z and starting to work on this Q. And just the whole entire day just gets wasted as I just sit in jail for no reason. I paid $200 to get out for going 86 miles an hour. I'm done, okay? We're getting back. We're gonna go and work on the Z. I wanna go back to my shop. I'm glad all my camera equipment's still here and not gone. Just like, what the hell? All right. So I'd like to explain about what the fuck happened yesterday. I decided to get arrested and spend nine hours in jail and $250 on tow truck and impound and I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram. If you do, I'm gonna put it in the link in the description below. I got arrested on Instagram Live. I really did not expect it. So I'm just gonna sit down in the middle of this video, explain to you what happened, and we're gonna try and continue with our regularly scheduled program because I went to the wheel shop, dropped off my wheel, went to Z Fever, said hello to a few friends for about 15 minutes, and now I'm on I-275 on my way back home. And I decided to take the left lane, the passing lane, all the way home. I'm about a quarter mile from my exit. So I decided to get from the passing lane all the way to the right lane. Safely, right? I mean, that's not illegal. You can not You can very legally go from left lane and change four lanes over. When I change those four lanes over, I get into the right lane and I immediately notice there's a police officer behind me. Not just a police officer, but a Florida Highway Patrol, which is my favorite. I get into the right lane, I'm going 72. Immediately I look down at my speedometer, I'm going 72. Now, I am seven miles over the speed limit, speed limit 65, I'm going 72, whatever the case may be. I'm in the right lane, I'm about to make my exit. This is a very reasonable speed for me. The cop follows me for a solid two minutes. It felt like a whole 10, but it, it was like a solid two minutes in the right lane. Followed me so much to the point that this man decided to not only get behind me, but to change lanes, pull up next to my driver window. I mean, obviously I'm going slow enough for this cop to pull up to my driver's side window. Try and look into my car, can't see because of the tinted windows. I see him shake his head, immediately gets back behind me and turns the lights on. This is where I get the bright idea to turn on my Instagram live. Not knowing what's gonna happen, this cop's been following me for the past three minutes. I mean, God knows what kind of altercation I could get into. I was really just trying to see what would happen. So I went ahead, got on Instagram live, so that way I can have, I don't know, a witness or some sort of video recording or something. That way I'm not holding my camera. I'm not holding my camera in the cop's face. Seems like a good idea until 15 seconds into the live stream, the cop immediately comes to my window and tells me to get out the car. I'm expecting license and registration. I'm expecting to ask what's going on. No, immediately tells me to get out the car and I'm under arrest. Me saying no, obviously, and asking why I'm being under arrest is because I'm driving like an idiot which is completely vague. And one, even so, even if you were just driving like an idiot, there's no reason to be pulling someone out the car even before you get their identification. Long story, I mean, a short story short, he basically just took me off the car, immediately put his hands on my shoulders, turned me around and put me in handcuffs before I even had the time to say, I don't consent to a search. By the time I said that, he already had the response of, oh, well, that's fine because we'll just search you in jail. 
You see how this is going well. Whole entire time, by the way, I have Instagram live up. I think I had a really good friend screen record most of the altercation for me, so thank you to him. I'll put his Instagram down in the link description, down in the description below. Come to find out, after this man's pulled me over, after this man's already pulled me out the car, put me in handcuffs, took my wallet, my phone, my keys, he then proceeds to tell me that my license is suspended and that I'm driving on a suspended license. I didn't know that. And it, listen, it's one thing for someone to say that you didn't know. It's another thing for your license to be suspended January 23rd and it only be February 4th. It's only been about eight days. <laughs> and the only way that anyone has the authorization to tell you that your license is about to be suspended is through mail. Apparently, I didn't get a letter about my suspended license, so I had no idea of it. Now, you would think, oh, well, if he had no idea of his suspended license, shouldn't he just get a ticket and be let go? No, no, unfortunately not. This cop decided that because of my suspended license, even though it's being a week and I had no idea of it, that this is the perfect opportunity to take me to jail. I guess I'm a criminal. I've learned my lesson. Um, check your mailboxes and make sure your tickets are paid. Now, I know you guys are wondering why was my license suspended in the first place? This is where it gets even more fun. Back in October when I bought the F-250 and the trailer that ended up spinning out in the middle of the road. If Again, if you guys follow me on Instagram, there's a lot of interesting content on there, okay? Go ahead and follow me because I've gotten into some bullshit ever since I opened up this shop. The day I bought it, the truck decided to spin out in the middle of the road. The tire came off the trailer, ended up losing control of the trailer. The trailer is way too heavy for the truck and it ended up spinning everything out. Not one single scratch on anything, by the way. I saved it and I don't know how I did that. Moral of the story is we did spin out in the middle of the road the day I bought the truck. And you guys know, you buy a car same day, you're not getting a license plate either until the next day or next week. And during COVID, you have to have an appointment at the DMV. You can't just show up and walk in. Now, thank God, I already had an appointment with the DMV previously, so that way I can actually renew my registration to all my 240 and my 350Z. So literally the day before I bought my truck and I was just gonna take it in, I was gonna show the registration and also get a license plate for the truck at the same time. FHP, Florida Highway Patrol, again, my favorite, decided to show up, inspect the truck, and give me a ticket for not having a license plate. Even though I showed him the title of me getting it that same day, he contacted the previous owner about the truck that I just bought. I obviously have a trailer that's completely detached from the truck with no wheel on it. Like, obviously today hasn't gone the way I wanted it to go. Apparently he had to give me a ticket. I understand why you guys would have to do uh, whatever it is that you guys decide to do. My point is, is it pissed me off. One day that the trailer decided to just lose shit on me and I spun out in the middle of the highway. So four months later, I spent nine hours in jail for something that I already got taken care of. 